In two days, I'll be heading out on a 1,000 mile journey to an event called Easter Jeep Safari, located in Moab, Utah. Knowing that I'll be living out of the back of my tundra for the next 10 days, and likely spending several nights on the road, I decided it was time to equip the tundra with a new bed rack system from Extrusion Overland. I went with their XTR1 Tundra model, but I tweaked a few things to ensure that everything lined up exactly where I wanted it. Taylor and I then assembled the rack at the studio, and that morning we set out to my first destination, just two hours away in Oregon. Iron Man 4x4's Nomad rooftop tent was exactly what this truck needed. I had been looking for this exact type of tent because I loved the benefits of a hard shell, but I needed the compact size of a folding rooftop tent. Pretty awesome. Wow, this is sweet. XTR 71 freestanding, so you just pull it out, hook it up on either end, and that's all there is to it. Okay. This thing set up in a while. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. This is the most prepared I've ever been on a trip. Like this this setup I have now. Yeah. Everything's organized. I have just everything I could possibly get to try to avoid accidents. They're still gonna happen. I was but gonna say this morning you already had a couple and it's like perfect profile. Yeah. I didn't want it to be any taller than that. That low pro. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of like my rack's almost backwards. You almost would need. Yeah, and what's funny is I was thinking about it because if we were to let's just say swap these and put the access gate on that side. We've determined that in order to run the awning that we want to run, which is a, what do you call that? 180 awning? 270. 270, that makes more sense. Math. So we're trying to make sure that we can mount the Batwing, but the only way to really do it is to swap the axis gate from extrusion onto the other side and the slider onto this side, um, which I think will work just fine. It's just gonna take a little bit. That one in the video, Taylor. Uh, eventually, I want to do a full walk around of the truck, show you guys just everything that we've done to it in the last couple weeks, and the full outfitting. This is this is pretty much the official adventure rig for now on. I'm gonna try to leave all of this stuff on board. I just realized we actually kind of lucked out that we went with Extrusion Overland for the bed rack because it's so modular. We're able to switch everything around. So. If we switch this to the other side, Taylor just pointed out that the slide out's gonna be on the wrong, it's gonna be going the wrong direction. But that's not a big deal because these come apart so easily uh, with just basic tools. We can just switch it around real quick, no problem, and just set it up a little bit different. The one thing we gotta remember though is to replace all the Loctite because this stuff will start to rattle loose if we don't take those. No, that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah. I could taste this stuff like oh, for a whole day really on my fingers. Sweet. It is delicious, right? Have you smelled it? No. I'm still up big and but it's still bright. Yeah, it's nice. So these guys made quick work here on the Tundra. The tent, I'm so happy with how the tent lines up. Everything looks awesome. Um, so we ended up switching the uh, access gate over to the passenger side, which I think is actually gonna be nice. This will fit right underneath the tent um, as the tent opens up this way. So we'll be able to access everything here. It makes a ton of sense. And then we put the slider over on the other side. Um, the tent itself, really, really happy with. Like, look at how low profile it is. Nice hard shell. Super comfortable interior. I got to test the one in on their showroom. Hi there. Feel free to disrobe and come on up anytime. We got a 270 awning on here that's gonna wrap around, cover the, uh, the tailgate area. It sticks out a little bit, but it's not terrible. And we're working on mounting some traction boards next. I think I hear Taylor making some modifications to his Jeep as well. This has been a perfect pit stop for us on our way. Um, get everything we need. On the way to Moab, we're able to take care of all these little problems we had going for ourselves. So I think Taylor is uh, chopping things off of his Jeep. Giving it the, uh, the old 10 cent fix here for the rubbing. Just a few months ago, I was ragging on this truck because I was absolutely sick of it being stock and now it looks 
It looks awesome and it performs great. And we have all of our supplies organized. The tent is, is gonna be so convenient. Pull it out, we're gonna go get some food and then we're on our way to Moab. have got about an hour behind us after leaving Iron Man 4x4. Now we're driving alongside the Columbia River, headed uh, east. I don't know why I had to check that. Doing a little truck stop fix. As the sun began to set, we realized that the trailer lights weren't working. We looked underneath and discovered several severed wires. Taylor tried soldering it, but it didn't seem to do the trick. That's when this awesome trucker guy broke out his tester and discovered that the Tundra had blown a fuse. With the fuse replaced, we continued to put miles behind us before spending the night at a rest stop. All right, so we made it to Utah. Never driven through this area in this much snow. Uh, I wasn't expecting this much snow, but I thought I'd give you guys an update on the Tundra. These trips to Utah are always, uh, for some reason, surprisingly expensive. About $1,000 round trip in fuel, fuel alone. Um, I'm doing about 7.8 to eight miles per gallon towing this whole setup. Uh, that's with the truck on 37s, which uh, might have done a little bit better on 35s, but I doubt it. Um, but we like the 37s, because when we get to Utah, we'll be able to take the trailer off and do an overland route in this truck, and, uh, and then do some more off-road stuff in the white truck. So. It's gonna be, it's gonna be cool. It's just gonna be expensive getting down there. To drill a hole in his windshield, something I've never seen before, but he's got a crack, a big old crack that's spreading. He wants to prevent the spreading of his crack. Oh yeah, it's, it's gonna... hard to see it because it's uh, wet. But I marked it on the inside with some chapstick. <laughs> see that? Because I didn't have anything to mark it with. You sure that's chapstick? And it continued to grow. There's barely even a chip there. I also took a rock chip from a minivan with perfectly fine fenders, and I don't really want to fill it with super glue because I feel like if we do it right, it'll actually like disappear. It's uh, pretty easy for those things to split across the windshield. I was just gonna go to like a movie theater, see one of those guys that has a little booth. It says they'll do it for free, and then they just bill your insurance. You ever seen those? Oh, of course. Yeah, that's what yeah. I would do. But you know what happens, right? Huh? You don't do it. And then you spider crack all over your windshield. I know, you, that's what you say you're gonna do and then you never do it. And then yeah. it goes right across yeah. the windshield. Finally, we had reached Moab, Utah, the mecca of adventure and all things off-road related. There was just one problem. With reports of up to 60 mile per hour winds, we sought shelter from the wind and set up a base camp at the bottom of a small gully. Afterwards, we decided to go do a bit of exploring. It's been really, really windy and dusty, so we haven't been able to do much. But we're at the Sand Flats campground, and there's little baby lines back uh, obstacle right here. I'd love to take the Tundra up it because it's just a super simple thing that you don't have to commit to. You just go up it, come down, you come out. You don't have to commit to a big, long trail. Check out the obstacle. Do you guys think I'm crazy for trying to do this?
place ever.